Welcome to my YouTube channel. Joining us again on Facing the Canon are Paul and Fiona Jones, singers and performers. Paul, Fiona, welcome back to Facing the Canon. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that, that first programme took us to the point where you were both performing, had huge success. Uh, just tell us again, how did you two meet? Ah, oh. can I shoot? Can I you just? go, right. you go. <laughs> yes. um, well, it, last time F Fiona mentioned that she was at the National Theatre in a show called Guys and Dolls. Um, I, I, I had worked with the director of Guys and Dolls when he was the director at Nottingham Playhouse. Um, for what it's worth, I did a, one of the smaller parts in Othello <laughs> with Timothy West and Daniel Massey and various, oh, lots of other people who became even more famous like Anthony Scher and Alison Steadman. But um, I, I, so I, I knew Richard and actually had um, uh, unfortunately had to turn him down for another job that he'd offered me. So he rang me up and he said, uh, what are you doing on, what if it was the 18th of January? And I said, um, nothing as far as I can remember. He said, would you like my ticket for the opening night of Guys and Dolls? I've directed Guys and Dolls for the National Theatre. And as you know, I don't go to my own first nights. So would you like my seat? So I said, I certainly would. And I had the best seat in the Olivier Theatre at the Royal National Theatre. And I, the show was absolutely wonderful, absolutely stunning, uh, brilliant performances all round. And I couldn't help noticing this one girl who was playing one of the hotbox girls. Anyway, uh, spool forward about six weeks or so, and Richard Eyre rings me again and he says, my next production at the National is going to be The Beggar's Opera. Would you like to come and play Mac Heath? And I said, oh, not many, Benny. And I, so I joined the company uh, to play Mac. And it was exactly the Guys and Dolls company. So they, the, the two shows had to be sort of dovetailed together like that. Um, and we started working together in approximately April of that year, and um, I was ever so pleased about that. Absolutely. Well, what did you say when you saw me at the rehearsal? Oh, you are mean. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make me say. Well, I, Paul walked into the rehearsal room on the day we were doing the read-through for The Beggar's Opera, and I looked, I kind of did a double take because I looked at him and I thought, hang on a minute. Oh, he's a pop star, isn't he? from a very, very long time ago. And, uh, <laughs> and so I went up How to you, you. <laughs> I went up to you at the sort of coffee break time, and I said something like, are you nervous, first day of rehearsal? And, uh, mm -hmm. and I said, you're a pop singer, aren't you? Yes, you are, you're a pop singer. Yes, you're Herman from Herman's Hermits. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just sort of saw the bit of a likeness. Not guilty, Your Honour. But you, no. were, you were very kind. Mrs Brown, you've got a lovely daughter. <laughs> no, that was never no, me. No, no, no. Fiona, I love the story mm. where you went to record something at the BBC. Yes. You leave the BBC, you walk past a church. Tell us that story. I came out of the BBC, as you said, having, you know, done what I did there. See all Souls Church, Langham Place. Now, I didn't know it was called that. Thought it was beautiful looking church, but had this overwhelming desire to walk into it. And I didn't quite know why, because I wasn't the lovely little girl who'd possibly would have made a commitment to the Lord when I was young, if only I'd known the gospel. Now I was a much sort of tougher, harder, uh, the National Theatre type young woman. But I had this desire to go into the church, and so I did. And I walked in, empty, beautiful, beautiful portrait of Jesus right at the front, an oil painting, the Jesus standing with his hands open, and you can see where the nails had gone into his flesh. 
And I'm just sitting in one of the seats looking at that. And then I notice that there are Bibles in front of all the seats. And I just, I just found my hand reaching for a Bible. And I'd never done that. I mean, you know, except at school, you know, I'd never picked up a Bible and just opened it. And I just flipped it open. And it fell open to what we probably consider as the most famous verse in the Bible. You've got Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. It was John. It was chapter 3. It was verse 16. And, um, well, the amplified version of that goes like this. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son that whoever believes in trusts in, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish or come to destruction or be lost, but shall have everlasting, eternal life. And I just, I read that and I read it again. And I thought, well, God sent his son for us. Is his son Jesus? It must be Jesus. And what's this eternal, eternal life? And I was just so moved. I read it, I knew it was true, but didn't understand it. Sure. And I deeply knew that I have to find out what this means. And I remember jumping up and I went, literally I was shaking. My heart was pounding, I was shaking. I knew this was true and I knew I had to find out about it. I went straight back to the National Theatre. But, but, but what was yeah, amazing about that, yeah, Fiona, yeah. is that the Bible's got 800 thousand words in it i know and you opened it i know at that verse i mm. mean talk about god's revelation to you that was god you know billions of people in the world but he at that moment yeah. was beginning to give you an epiphany absolutely he'd been drawing me over years and now he was showing me the gospel in one verse yes. and as you say it could have been any page but it was that and it was so powerful. And I was sitting alone, quiet. That's when God can speak to you. And that was that beautiful word straight to my, it was piercing my heart. And I, I, I went to the National Theatre that night because we were going to do a show, went straight to Paul's dressing room door. And I knocked on his door and I'm still, he opened the door and I never forget what I said to him. I said, Paul, I want to tell you something, but you've got to absolutely promise me you're not going to laugh at me. Mm. He said, well, don't be silly. What do, you, what do you mean? I said, no, no, no. Promise whatever I say, you won't laugh. And he said, okay, I won't laugh. I said, well, I've been into a church. And I said, I picked up a Bible. And, and, and Paul, it says that God sent his son that we can have eternal life, that we wouldn't perish or come to destruction if we believe in him. But I said, I don't understand it. And I'm going to go to that church on Sunday. And I'm going to find out what it means. And you said... I said, I'm coming with you. Yeah. Because I had, all those years ago, as a little boy, learned, you know, that Jesus died for our sins. Mm. And he was God's son. Mm. And I'd, I'd sort of pushed that under several carpets mm. <laughs> over the years. And at this point, well, I had been sort of coming back to faith very, very gradually myself. And that started because when I was on tour with my band, the blues band, uh, mostly in Germany, I had this habit of going to art galleries, the purpose of which was to separate me from the sort of craziness of the world of popular music yes. performance. And, and all the add-ons that go with it. And all the stuff that goes so with it. So you thought, pick up, go to art galleries. Yes, go to art galleries, stand and look at some pictures. And over a period of about a year, I became absolutely infatuated with a German artist called Kaspar David Friedrich, who was a very, very powerfully convinced Christian uh, who lived about, you know, sort of from the late 18th century on into the early 19th. And he, he was a an extraordinarily gifted painter, which I don't think a lot of people had picked up on at the time, but in, in the intervening 40 years or so, uh, his stuff has multiplied. It's now zillions of pounds. And a uh, very, very important painter, but he, he, he helped to bring me back to the Lord. So when 
you came and knocked on my door and said that. I was, I was ready. Yes, <laughs> you were more receptive. Yes. So on Sunday, you go to church. Yes. And what happens when you go to church? Well, we were knocked out. For a start, it was packed, absolutely packed. It's, it, All Souls has a downstairs and an upstairs. And we couldn't sit anywhere. And they were trying to find us a seat and put us on the stairs. We couldn't be seated anywhere else. So that was an amazing witness to us, first of all. Secondly, there was an orchestra, a wonderful orchestra. And when people started to really sing the hymns and the worship songs, I mean, I was looking around at people and they were going for it. And they, their little faces, you know, were just radiant with, with love. And I, I knew they had something I didn't have. Mm. I'd said all along, oh, yes, I believe in God, but I didn't even know God. I had, I had no clue who God was. We were so moved, so touched by that service. I didn't go up to anyone and ask them about eternal life at that point. But a lovely, lovely man called Mike Lawson came up to us, who was one mm. of the ministry team, and he recognized us, he is, you know, obviously recognized Being Paul. performers. Yes, yes. and I, I had a series called Widows on television at that time. So he recognized us and he said, you know, are you new here? And he started asking us questions and, and we said, yes. And he said, would you like to do some private Bible study with me? And I thought, can I, can I be seen going to someone's house with, you know, to do <laughs> Bible study? Because I was all dressed in leathers and, you know, all zips and studs and things like that, back combed hair up yeah. here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but we did and it was beautiful, wasn't it? It was absolutely beautiful. And it was, wasn't it tea, cake yeah. and Bible study? Yes, yes, it, yes was. it was, it was, yeah. it was, it was, it was absolutely. So you both started going? Yeah. Yes. And that helped you on that journey. Oh. Yes. But then um, going back, Paul, with you, you in your atheist days, debated with Cliff Richard. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Well, that was uh, quite a lot of years. I mean, about 15 years before I joined the National Theatre. And there was some sort of program where it, you had two people confronting each other, debating um, whether something's good or bad or right or wrong or whatever. And the, the topic of that debate was actually Billy Graham. Cliff Richard had been hired to <laughs> stand up for Billy Graham, and I had been hired to attack Billy Graham. So I confess to you now, all these years later, I knew nothing about Billy Graham. I scarcely knew of his existence. So here I was kind of attacking him and talking about him as if he were the, the Awful. And this is on television. It is on television. And, you know, when I look back on, on that now, I realise I wasn't, I wasn't there to attack Billy Graham. I was there to attack Cliff Richard. Yes. That's what I wanted to do. To kind of ridicule him. Yes. I wanted to get the better of Cliff Richard because I was fed up with him. <laughs> he was just too successful. And too nice. <laughs> oh, and, and clean. Far too nice and clean, yes. So... Um, I, d I don't look back on, on that with anything uh, good at all. But, um, but what's, I did what's it, interesting but after that, uh, Cliff Richard actually, with two friends, prayed for you. Yes, that's right. And what's interesting is, years later, Cliff calls, phones you both, and invites you to go with him mm. to hear an evangelist. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, we weren't at the National then. No, uh, we we'd, were at we'd home. finished yeah. all that. Um, we were uh, living I, together. We were doing we? other things. Mm. Uh, I, I think, I, unless I'm very much mistaken, I was in a, a, a show called Pump Boys and Dinettes yes. at the Piccadilly Theatre. Um, and the phone rang this after, that particular afternoon, and uh, it, was, it was Cliff. And he said, um, I want you to come and hear a, an evangelist called Luis Palau at White City Stadium in yes. West London. And he said, you can pick your night because he's there for a whole month. And I remember I said, well, whoever he is, he's got delusions of grandeur because Queen's Park Rangers can't fill it on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> yes. And it, it w that was true. As w in fact, they'd, they'd given up trying to fill it at that time. But Actually, Luis Palau didn't fill it for a month. He filled it for six weeks yes. in the end. 
And uh, Cliff, uh, I think it's true to say that God had told Cliff to get as many people in show business to go and hear Luis Palau as he possibly could. And Cliff did it and he promised us dinner. If we would go, he promised to buy us dinner after Afterwards, the evening was take over. You, yes. And I think he promised that to a hundred and something other people in show business as well. And in other words, Cliff was being a very, very diligent servant of the Lord. Absolutely. So you both go, yeah. you hear Luis Palau, mm. uh, just an inc I knew Luis, he's promoted to glory now. Yeah. What an incredible uh, man and an evangelist. Yes. Okay, tell us what happens. Okay, so we're sitting there and he just preaches the gospel brilliantly. He tells us about this heavenly father who sent his son Jesus Christ to love us, to heal us. And he, he finishes telling us the entire gospel about how Jesus came for one sole purpose was for us, that we may have eternal life and that we may know him and have an intimate, loving relationship with him and that Jesus will bring us to the Father. We will be no longer estranged from the Father, not separated anymore. And then he said, would you like to know this Jesus? And I remember him saying, he's knocking on the door of your heart. Are you going to pretend you're not in? He said, I'm going to pray a prayer for you now. And he said, I want you to come down. And he said, if you come down here in front of the, where we are now, onto the, you know, where the, the grass is, he said, you can receive Jesus Christ into your heart right now. He'll come right now. He loves you. He's, he, he wants to forgive you. Well, I mean, I just, I couldn't stand it anymore. I just jumped up. I just, and I wasn't like that at all but I had to get down there, I had to pray this prayer. My eyes were pricked with tears, I, had, I was choked, and I got up and I started to walk towards the front and Paul grabbed hold of my arm, didn't you? A scaredy cat yes. grabbed hold of her arm. I'm not going down there. Well, I said to her, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm doing what he just said. <laughs> I said, great, where am I sleeping tonight? We were living together. We, we were living in sin. So, so what, but he didn't say anything no, about that. It no. was like God had pierced your heart I, about that. Yeah, well, I mean, I knew for some reason, whether it was something I'd heard before yeah. or whatever, no. I just knew what I'd just heard. I know, but it's interesting <laughs> that in those days, yeah. living together was known as living in sin. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And so you said, well, if Fiona's going to go down there, yeah. where am I going to Where am I sleep sleeping tonight? tonight? Yeah, so I, have I got to go and find a, a hotel or something? So uh, she said, we don't even need to worry about things like that. That will sort itself. We would be mad not to accept this wonderful f future while it's right here in front of us. <clears throat> and I said, great. Well, will you marry me then? So you proposed. I proposed to her just in, at in that the moment yeah. when you were going to go down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then you responded. I. It was almost as if we were looking at each other, at, and this sort of time was going by, and I was just looking at, at. And you know, I'd come from this broken home. And I had decided I'd never, ever in my life get married. Why would I get married? What's the point of it? But I knew I loved this man. But the most important thing, John, is that here we were in the presence of the Lord. Mm. I just heard the gospel. We just heard the gospel. We just heard that if we come to our Lord Jesus, the Father in heaven is going to look after us. It's going to be different. And suddenly all the fears of what my lovely mum went through and the divorce and the unhappy marriages suddenly just left me. And I thought it's going to be all right. Praise God. And I just looked at Paul and I just went, Yes, 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 I'll marry you. Yes, I'll marry you. So we both burst into tears at that point. And by then, Luis had just begun the prayer, so we, we couldn't move. And we began to pray the prayer to receive Jesus into our hearts right there and then, where we were seated, still up in the bleachers. Um, and we just, we wept with joy. We felt so clean. Mm. When you said, Jesus, come into my heart, fill me, forgive me. I, I turn fully away from this darkness and my selfish way of living and I turn fully to you, Lord. There's just this cleansing that he does, isn't there? 
And we just left that stadium, tears, laughter. Liberated. Yes. R oh, or as the hymn writer put it, ransomed, healed, healed restored, restored, forgiven. forgiven. Yes. Who, like me, his praise should, should sing. sing. Absolutely. Yeah. It was just the most wonderful thing. And we knew we were starting our lives aright. Yes, and we walked out of that stadium and we walked to the place where we were to have dinner with Cliff Richard yeah. and Luis Palau. Yeah. He was oh, there. You, did you know that? No. no. And Can you imagine how that felt for us? The man who'd brought us the gospel message that night that we'd just got saved was there. That was so precious to us. The next thing that happened was that I telephoned All Souls Langham Place and said, may we please be married? We had to have a, a civil ceremony in a what registry, it, registry, office. Registry, yes. registry office, thank you. And uh, that we'd had that on the Saturday and then on the Sunday, we had a service of blessing at All Souls. And we had uh, many of the cast of Guys and Dolls and the Beggars Opera, including the director as well. And uh, we, we, had, we had people from Pump Boys and Dinettes, the show I was in, and we had as many family as we could assemble. Amazing. And we had, we had a super, the choir that had won the um, choir of the year that year for the gospel choirs was a, uh, an outfit from an Adventist church called the Mary Bell Gospel Choir. Yes. And they sang at our wedding. Boy, they were good. They were glorious. How? Afterwards, Richard Eyre came up to us and he said, I really enjoyed the show. <laughs> We just wanted to witness to them. We said, to, we said to Mike Lawson, do a sermon and just preach the gospel. Yeah. We were just in instantly, you know, I don't know if this happened to you, but the moment we received Jesus into our hearts, we wanted everyone to know no, his uh, love. Same for me. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What would you, Fiona, Paul, what would you say to our viewers who've not yet received Christ, haven't yet opened at that door, what would you say to our viewers? Go ahead, please. You know, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, you might hear other people saying, what a wonderful change it's been in their lives to know this loving, loving, loving Savior. But it's only you will know if you taste and see. So you just say, Jesus, I want to know you too. Jesus, come into my heart. Just, just come into my heart. Reveal yourself to me. Make yourself real to me. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know your person. And you know what? You'll never be loved so much. You will never be loved so much. He is the great lover. He's not angry with you. He's not fed up with you, but he does want you to come because no matter what, where we are in life, if you're struggling right now, do you know he doesn't want you to struggle? If you're rebelling from him right now, he doesn't want you to rebel. He just wants you to come as you are and he will make you whole and he will just fill you with his love. That is so true. Come as you are. And if you haven't yet opened that door, but you'd like to open that door to Jesus, then do that now. Just pray this prayer, echo this prayer that I'm going to pray now. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. I bow before you. I acknowledge you as Lord and God. And I now acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I know I have done many things wrong and I ask you to forgive me, cleanse my life, set me free from the past. I invite you now into my life. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your power, your presence, your peace. Help me from this day on to build my life on you. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. 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 A prayer for you. Lord, for every person that's prayed that prayer, 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce and I pronounce his forgiveness over you. May you know his cleansing. May you know his presence. May you know your heart being warmed, your mind being illuminated. And may you know Christ's protection as you build your life on him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You're a man of many talents. Well, both of you are, uh, Paul. Many talents, including the harmonica. Can you play us a, a gospel song with your harmonica? <clears throat> that would be wonderful. Right. <laughs> yes. This morning with my mind resting on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind resting on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind resting on Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 You can't hate your neighbor with your mind. Resting on Jesus. Can't hate your neighbor with your mind. Resting on Jesus. Can't hate your neighbor with your mind. Resting on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Absolutely beautiful. You're a tonic and you exude uh, the grace and the aroma of Christ. And it's just been so enjoyable talking to you both. And we pray God's blessing upon you both and the future uh, and the ministry that God has called you to. Thank you so much, Fiona, Paul, for joining us on Facing the Canon. Thank you, John. Oh, thank it's been you a great so pleasure. Much. We've loved it. Thank you. Oh, Fiona Henley, Paul Jones, wasn't that inspiring? It really is all about Jesus. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Thank you so much for joining us on Facing the Canon. Please join us again. Mm -hmm.